Hello and welcome to this video. This is going to be a short video on a simple unit test in AL. So let's get started. So I've created a small code unit here called my JSON management, which I've set to access internal. And the reason why I've set it to access internal is of course if you look back to my uh, video series before, AL developers, we need to do better. I talked about that we have to close off all interfaces as much as possible, unless we want someone to extend our code. So by default, set your things to access internal. Anyway, it has one public function called readJSON, where it takes a JSON string, and then it looks for the type. And the type will then either be, for example, customer or vendor. And if it's not the above, it will throw an error saying it's an invalid type. And then it will just call the functions, the local functions, either create custom or create vendor. And depending on which one, of course, it's going to create a customer with the name, which is now JSON, either customer or vendor. It seems pretty simple, very straightforward. So if you go over here, I've created a small page. So if I press create, And then I close this page down, and we see it create a new customer. So, everything looks like it's working fine, right? So why should I want to test this? Well, let's do that anyway. Now, since I made my uh, coaching internal, it's important that in your app JSON file, you add internal visible too, to the extensions that you want to be able to view this internal function. And of course, in this case, it's going to be my test. So I just added my app in here. And in the app JSON for my test, you can see I have just a dependency on my uh, my AL app, and then I have a dependency on the library assert. We then go to our test code unit. I've created one with the subtype test, which of course you have to do because it's going to be a testing code unit, and it creates some functions where I have defined them as tests. Now what they actually doing is quite simple. It's a given that we have our JSON string, and in this case, I'm just also making a customer account just to make sure if there are any customers with, this, with the same name already, then I will take into account that. So I will count and then plus one down here, as you can see, as my uh, is equal. But then uh, after I do my preconditions, I do just call a function, and then I will check if the customer has been created. And the same with the vendor. And also have one if it's an valid type, then I want it to give me the error message, invalid is not a valid type, because I'm passing it invalid here. So everything look, looks great. So let's try to run these tests. So run test in current file. As you can see, it's uh, complaining a little bit or giving a warning about the task scheduler, because it's running in the, cont in the container. So yeah, I haven't turned that off, but of course you should do that because as I'm saying, it could give some problems. Now, as you can see, it actually fails my tests. The test create customer fails because it's saying that it's already a customer with the identification fields and values of zero. Oh, not zero, of blank. Okay, so that means I have to do something wrong over here, right? Because I should, it should be blank. It should be taking something from the number series. You just take the next number. I'm not passing in a number. And that's of course because I forget it to add true here to the trigger. So it takes the next number. The test for my uh, create vendor works as expected, but then this one is also failing. And what is it saying? Well, it's saying it's not the same value that I was expecting. And as you can see, it's because this there is no space between here. So if I go back, I have forgotten to add a space to my error message, like so. Now, let's try to deploy these again. So let's uh, publish them without debugging. So now it's been published. Let's go back to our Visual Studio code. Close down the debugger. As you can see over here, now we have also a tab over here called testing, where you can see these are the tests that is found in my current code unit, and if they fail or not. 
So I can actually run all of them again from here if I want to. I can run them one at a time. So let's try to run them one at a time. Let's try to see if, uh, if I can outgrade a customer. And I could. So now this has uh, passed successfully. And let's see if I'm getting the right error message on my invalid. And as you can see already, I can. It did. So now everything is actually working as I expected. My unit tests are passing. And that's actually how simple it is to write a unit test for a given function or given functionality. Now the great thing here is of course now I could go back to my uh, JSON management here and start refactoring the code. Of course this is this doesn't have much to refactor, so I couldn't really do it in this one. But if I had a lot of complicated code I could start trying to simplify it, make it uh, smaller, maybe taking some of it moving out to smaller functions and stuff. And then very fast again run my unit test to see if it's still working as I expected. And because I can run the unit test directly from Instar Visual Studio Code, I don't even have to open Business Central. Of course, I have to deploy this app to Business Central. But besides that, I don't have to open it again. I can run it directly here. It's a very fast way of keep on testing your code and making sure that you're not breaking anything when you're refactoring your code or adding new functionality. Well, that was actually it for this uh, small, very short video. But I hope uh, it, it shows you how easy it is to actually write unit tests. Until next time, stay safe and thank you for watching. Goodbye.